Hey everyone, this is Jaxie, and today we are going to get excited about history with more decisive battles, battles in Italy. And right now the Germans are here, but the game plan remains the same. So unfortunately we lost most of these bridges over here on the west, but I'm going to slowly move up. I'm going to try to encircle some units. We're still shooting for Palermo over here. We are getting combat command B and some armor, which is real nice. I'm hoping that having armored units allows us to push faster. We have a big clump of Italian units over here by our new 82nd Airborne. There's a little stronghold there that's going to hold us up just a bit, but I'm not super worried about it. I think we're good enough. Ragusa's all set, which is nice. I don't have to worry about linking up with the British anymore. It's already done. Just trying to get my major divisions here, like the 1st and the 45th, and start getting um, concentric advantages. This is the point where, you know, if you wanted to, you could use the game's combat advisor, but I'm going to try to hit them from multiple sides, get hexes where I can attack from three or four sides, have lots of artillery, lots of air. I think at this point, most of the units that are going to show up and face me are going to, and they're here, and they're not going to get any more for a while. So I'm not going to worry about saving my air combat and air units for interdictions. I'd rather have them in the fight, putting the odds more in my favor. And right here, we're going to do the same thing. Now, the Hermann Goering division showing up is a problem, but I have... A numbers advantage here I just have to be able to put it into place so even though moving to this hex is kind of risky because they can hit me on three sides I need to start doing the same thing to them I have to move up I have to start stacking we're gonna do this attack here there is a 40% surrender chance and yeah it's probably worth it just to go for that I mean, I could have saved the movement points and not done the overrun, but I want to try to get these counters off. And right there, 70% chance to surrender. We don't get it. And that unit's pretty weak, and he's pretty exposed, unfortunately. So I'll have to see what we're going to do. They might counter on the next turn and destroy them. There's nothing I can really do about that. I went for a 70% chance, didn't get it. And German armor is here. I've got a lot of these units stacked up. I really want to get this counter out of here because if they take one more step, they're done. But if they can retreat for four or five turns, nothing. And we do get it. It's nice. So the Italians are starting to pull back. We're cracking them, but with the Germans here, we're going to have to be very, very deliberate. And my divisions are kind of split, but eh, nothing there, even if I give it my all. The divisions are kind of split. That sort of hurts the um, combat odds. You can see right there, even 7-1, to one, it wasn't worth it for the attacker and defender chances. But if the Americans can come in and I can hit them from two sides, I'll start making it worthwhile. Any weak points. Now that one, if I were a little braver, I could have taken. There was one result where they would take a casualty and I wouldn't, but there was also a result where I would take two. They would take one. And here, one defender and a retreat. That's about as good as I could have asked for. They're going to be able to close that line back up, but that unit is going to slowly start cracking. And eventually then with weight of numbers, I will be able to start moving them. Next turn, I might have to be more deliberate about keeping my divisions together and trying to squeeze every last percent of combat efficiency for these steps. It's also important to note in a couple turns, I will be getting the first reinforcement cards. And it's just kind of like an interdiction. You can play it on any unit. 
and reinforce their steps, which I am most definitely going to have to do. Supplies looking good. I'm really happy about that. It could be because we're not moving fast enough to really put the supplies into stress, but supply in this game really does have a big effect on the amount of combat factors you're going to have. And since everything is rolling a D6, it's very important we do that. I bring up a lot of artillery, but it's not going to make a difference there. Not going to make a difference there. I like how it'll let you attack at 2 to 1, even though there are only attacker odds there. I don't know why you would do it, but... In, in a more complex game that models, like, fatigue better and wearing down units, that might not be a horrible idea, but for something like this... You know, there is an efficiency meter at the bottom, and it's but it's really like step-based and supply-based. So I'm just not going to bother with it right now, as is. Over here, let's just run through. A lot of this game, if you're not using the combat advisor to plan your moves for you, it's really just checking out what opportunities you can get. Now, 10 to 1, and they take a casualty and retreat. I wish I could have inflicted more damage, but I'm going to take free hits anytime I can. Even though the retreat is negligible, since they will definitely have time to come back and plug, that, plug the gap. 40% chance, but I only get a 1 for 1. That's okay, because I outnumber them. And the Big Red 1 will get the unit back faster than they will. So using follow-up attacks, I should be able to get something out of it. Can't even make them surrender on this strong point. That's disappointing, especially with engineer units attacking a fortification. Overrun here, automatic. It's not like it's a good unit I'm getting off the board, but you do get victory points for every kill. And a 70% chance there. Lovely. That bridge is clear. And yeah, maybe I can get lucky. Ah. Oh. You do at least need a 2-1 to one even to launch an attack in the game. So, unfortunately, even with the surrender option available, it's just not going to let me attack. But it makes sense, and it makes sense that you need a 2-1 to one to launch an attack because it's kind of preventing you from wasting your time. It really is. I wish we had some reinforcements, but we had so few attacks, I do have some interdictions here. I'm going to just try to disrupt supplies to some of these units, keep them from moving. I do have gaps in my lines, not that they have enough units to really take advantage, but it doesn't hurt. Now, right there, I am still winning pretty decisively. They don't have any sort of victory point. There's nothing they can do about it yet, which is lovely. So I'm going to hit resolve, and we lose a unit. I knew when I made that attack... I was taking a risk and dropping it to one step. Hermann Goering shifted downwards and made me pay. So you can see more Italian units are definitely showing up. It's not going to be quite as easy as I thought. But we are going to get some para drops here to try to take Catania. And hopefully it's going to be a good drop and not on enemy units. We got lucky. They don't exactly have their supplies, but Catania looks like it's just strong points. Not a lot of units there. Pour one out for our first casualties. 32 victory points. But that's turn four. We'll be doing turn five in a bit. Um, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Please leave a comment or like to let me know if you want more Battles in Italy content. And as always, I keep doing war games and history reviews and book reviews and things like that. So subscribe if you're interested in that and stay excited about history.